Hello, I am Jack, and I am back with my Star Wars reviews. What, the dark lighting? Well, it only makes sense seeing how we're talking about the darkest of the original trilogy. The Empire Strikes Back! Yes, here we are. Said to be the greatest Star Wars film of all time. The Empire Strikes Back was the sequel to the most successful film at the time, Star Wars. So naturally, there was a lot of anticipation. While the film did great at the box office, critics at the time were a little... Eh, about it. But as time has gone on, the film has grown a reputation as not only being the best Star Wars film, not only being one of the best sequels, but one of the best movies of all time. And yeah, I pretty much agree. Despite the Rebel Alliance destroying the Death Star, the Empire has nonetheless, as the title says, struck back. They attack the new Rebel base on the ice planet of Hoth. Luke Skywalker is forced to flee and land in the Dagobah system, where he learns from a Jedi Master named Yoda about the Force. Meanwhile, Han, Leia, Chewbacca, and C-3PO are, well, just trying to avoid the Empire. This movie was not afraid to be different and take risks, despite there being no death star in this film, the Empire feels more threatening than ever. You really get the feeling that they're so pissed off at the loss of their ultimate weapon, and so they're gonna strike back hard. Unlike the other two films in the trilogy, which end with giant battles, this film begins with a giant battle. And while in the other two films they win it, in this one, they lose. I remembered being really surprised seeing the Empire taking the Rebels down, and Luke Skywalker having to flee. This movie decided to tell a different story. It goes down a similar path that the Lord of the Rings trilogy did, by having our characters split up in the second part. The movie did a great job of intercutting all these different stories going on, and all of them are equally interesting. We have Darth Vader, who is obsessed with finding Luke Skywalker. We have Luke, learning the new ways of the Force from Yoda. And we have Leia and Han, who are starting to form a romance together while trying to escape the Empire. This movie continued to develop these great characters and make them even more interesting. Luke Skywalker has matured in this film. He's much more mature and confident after having destroyed the Death Star. But despite this, he is still flawed. He still whines a little bit, and when he's training under Yoda, he still doesn't have full confidence in what he's doing. And in the end, he rushes off to face Darth Vader without having completed his training. And it results with Vader revealing a little something about how they're related. This leads to a great moment that I think gets very overlooked. Luke looks down at the large shaft below him then looks back to Vader who is reaching his hand out, offering him the chance to join him. Luke refuses, lets go, and falls. He would rather die than turn to the ways of the dark side. This is a great moment as it slowly starts to show Luke's transition into the Jedi that we see him as in the next film. We also have romance blooming between Leia and Han, and once again, the chemistry between them is great. There are so many great iconic lines between them. Easily the most iconic is the famous, I love you, I know moment when Han is about to be frozen in carbonite. And it was great because in the original script, Han was going to say, I love you too. But in the end, they changed it to better reflect his character. Easily the highlight of this film, though, is Darth Vader. This is the movie that made Darth Vader into the badass villain we all know him as today. In the first film, he was a cool character, but he unfortunately got a little bit overshadowed due to the fact that he was nothing more than a pawn of Grand Moff Tarkin, who as I said in my last review, I just thought was boring. But here, due to Tarkin's death when the Death Star was blown up, Vader is now in control. Unlike in the first film where Tarkin stopped him from choking another officer, in this film, he chokes as many as he wants. An admiral comes out of light speed too close to the Hoth system, making the rebels know that they're there. Vader then chokes him and kills him without giving him any second chance. I love the moment where he puts the seconded command captain in charge. The captain just acts so scared knowing the pressure that's on him now. James Earl Jones once again does a great job with the voice of Darth Vader. He truly feels like a leader in this film, although he still is being controlled by the Emperor, who we eventually see in this film. He also is able to show just how powerful he is in the lightsaber fight between him and Luke, which is a vast improvement over the lightsaber duel in the first film. The choreography is more fast and exciting, but still not too overly choreographed like the duels in the prequels. It shows a great combination of Vader's ability 
ability to fight with just one hand, and sometimes not even use anything but his force power to throw objects at Luke. And here we finally start finding out some more stuff about Vader. In a fantastic scene, an admiral comes in to see him. He then sees Darth Vader's helmet being put over his head, and we see a burned and scarred man. In just one simple image, we know that there is in fact a human being under there. And of course, we learn that he is in fact Luke's father. Yes, this moment is talked about to death, as it's easily the most iconic twist of all time. Not only is James Earl Jones' line delivery there just fantastic, but the music as it slowly rises up, and Mark Hamill's great performance as he refuses to accept this as the truth. Another moment that I think gets very overlooked is the following scene when Vader is connecting with Luke while he's on the Millennium Falcon, and Luke just says, Ben, why didn't you tell me? Here it really starts to sink in that Yes, this is true. This movie also introduced another one of the best Star Wars characters of all time, Yoda. The special effects on him are great. The fact that Yoda's a puppet, but he feels so real, is just amazing. His character is both funny, but also wise and powerful at the same time. When you first meet him, he just seems like a little nuisance, as he starts digging through all of Luke's stuff. But then, we later find out that he is in fact a Jedi Master. This was something that they were originally going to do with the character of Ben Kenobi in the first Star Wars. The idea of the character starting off as a bit of a trickster, and you not believing that they are in fact a Jedi Master. And they executed it great here. It's an old classic idea that the Master Wizard is who you least expect him to be. And the way that Yoda talks about the Force is just so interesting, and it really helps you get to know the idea of what this thing is. But still not too much. The way that Yoda talks about the Force as being something that you can have no matter how big or small you may be. No matter how strong or or weak you are. One of the most amazing seeds in the entire series is when Yoda uses the force to lift Luke's spaceship out of the swamp. As always, John Williams' amazing score helps to make this an incredible moment, and the visual of the starship lifting out of the water still looks astounding to this day, and it's just so interesting seeing Luke Skywalker's journey into finding out more about the force. The scene where he goes into the cave and gets into a fight with what seems like Darth Vader, only to realize that it's him. It's such an interesting and thought-provoking scene that makes a lot more sense later on. Like the original, this film always keeps you interested. No matter which character you're following, you're always into it. You have this very fast-paced and exciting story with Han and Leia fleeing from the Empire, but you also have a much more calm and relaxing story with Luke learning how to be a Jedi from Yoda. But the dialogue and the performance are so well done that you're just into every moment. And that's another thing. While the dialogue at times was a little bit corny in the first film, the dialogue in this film is pretty spot on for the most part. The action in this movie, amazing. This movie definitely took the first film to the next level. As much as I love the Death Star battle from the first film, the Battle of Hoth is by far the superior battle. It takes a much different approach. It's not just a bunch of ships flying around blasting at each other. It's a battle going on on the ground with those awesome Imperial walkers. And you've got Luke and the other rebels firing at them constantly. They have to use their tow cables in order to bring them down. Then Luke eventually gets shot down. He still is able to bring down another walker, but in the end, the Imperials get into the base. We get other great scenes like the asteroid field sequence with some of the best dogfights ever. The climax of this movie is much more simple than the first film's climax, but nonetheless incredibly engaging and exciting. We have Leia, Lando Calrissian, and the droid facing off against the stormtroopers, while Vader and Luke have their lightsaber battle together. And besides the choreography improving vastly over the first film, it also shows a great deal of different locations. It starts out in the carbon freezing chamber, which just looks like hell, and has so much atmosphere in it. The lack of music in many ways helps make it even more realistic. Then it eventually leads into a small room where Vader throws objects at Luke. Then one object crashes through the window and Luke gets sucked out onto a gantry where they duel right over a reactor shaft. Sparks are flying everywhere, and despite Luke being rescued and the group getting away, Han Solo is still frozen in carbonite and taken away. And one of the things that this movie was criticized the most for doing at the time was the cliffhanger. People were expecting another happy ending just like the first film, but no, they left us on a very bad, in a good way, note. But it still kept us interested and it still gave us enough. This is something that a lot of second to last films 
films in a franchise struggle with. They don't feel that much like films. They feel more like two-hour trailers for the next one. But this film gave us everything we wanted and left us wanting even more. We get to see much more of the galaxy in this film. This was a problem that I had with the first film. We don't get to see that much of other planets, other than Tatooine. This film, we begin on the ice planet of Hoth, which is a nice twist on the first film where we began on the hottest planet in the galaxy. Here we begin on the coldest planet. We also get Dagobah, which is just this amazing planet. I love the idea how it's literally basically one giant swamp. Another amazing place we get to see is Cloud City. Something that I will give credit to the special edition is that it does show us more of Cloud City. In fact, this film definitely has the best special edition changes. We get to see more of the Wampa, the creature that attacks Luke at the beginning. The old emperor is changed to the new one, Ian McDermott, who was the emperor in Return of the Jedi in the prequels. And Cloud City certainly feels bigger and more vast, even though the CGI still doesn't blend with it fully. John Williams once again delivers an amazing score. Besides the returning themes from the first film, we also get some great new themes. Yoda's theme is great. It helps make the scenes with him on Dagobah feel even more wondrous. But the real highlight is the Imperial March. It took me a while to actually notice that there was no Imperial March in the original Star Wars, and it was introduced in this film. It helped Darth Vader and the rest of the Empire really feel like players in this story. A true force to be reckoned with. Are there any problems with this film? Not really. It's a pretty damn perfect film. You could nitpick a bunch of the special effects being a little bit dated, but much like the first film, the majority of them hold up great. And just about all the problems that I had with the first film are improved upon enormously in this one. So yeah, The Empire Strikes Back is an incredible film. I would agree with most people that this is the best film of the series. It goes darker, the characters are continued well, the action is incredible, and it's just overall the best film in the series. Empire is definitely one of the best films out there, and I give The Empire Strikes Back an absolute 10 out of 10. So thanks for watching my review of The Empire Strikes Back, and fear not, for next time we will lighten things up with my review of Return of the Jedi.